So I'm with uh, Dr. Heidi DeBlock, who is an intensive care physician uh, and also space medicine expert, literally rocket scientist, who's come to speak to us at um, the ANSC ASM here in KL. Uh, I've just got a couple of um, questions to, to pose to her after her talks. Um, so Dr. DeBlock, um, you've given a, uh, an amazing talk on space medicine and the health effects of that um, in long duration space travel. Um, what I'm interested in is uh, what you think are the most challenging uh, health concerns in long duration space travel and um, in the context of that whether you think we're going to achieve um, travel of, of humankind to Mars within our lifetime. I definitely think that we will achieve um, spaceflight to Mars, human spaceflight to Mars in mm -hmm. our lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's a goal, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful goal and it's an attainable goal mm -hmm. and, and I see it. I hope it's in my lifetime, mm -hmm. definitely be in your lifetime, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I definitely see that coming. Um, because we're, we're put here to explore mm -hmm. and that's, that's going to be the exciting part of it. Um, as far as the, the physiologic changes, as we discussed, every system in our body changes uh, as a result of zero gravity and microgravity and uh, everything's affected. And the question is, you know, what, to what extent? Some organ systems more than others. I'm in the cardiovascular physiology lab, so of course I like to think that the cardio aspects of space flight are significant. Mm -hmm. And they, we have significant changes in the cardiovascular system when we go up into space. And as a result of adaptation, coming back to Earth, we're really affected by those changes. And that'll be my talk tomorrow mm -hmm. about going up into space and then coming back. When we come back, and that's going to be important for landing, for landing on a new planet and, and experiencing gravity again, is making it safe for ourselves to get out and not pass out when we get there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, some of the arrhythmias that are seen that we have to always be concerned about. Um, there's QT prolongation uh, that we're studying. There are hemodynamic effects in spaceflight. You feel okay, but your whole system is changing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty exciting changes. And it helps us also understand how we work here on Earth mm -hmm. by de-engineering as we go up into space. Mm -hmm. uh, there are new findings from the International Space Station, mostly of uh, ocular changes mm -hmm. uh, in visual disturbances up in space in the prolonged space flight that we're just it, it's starting to look at mm -hmm. and we've taken that on in the cardiovascular physiology lab also. Mm -hmm. So those those are some of the big changes. Uh, other changes hopefully uh, we can cope with pretty well but as far as every physiologic change we need to keep space flight safe and so countermeasures are tried to be created for all of those other physiologic changes mm -hmm. so that we can keep ourselves healthy through space flight. Fantastic. Um, we look forward to your talk on the cardiovascular changes yes. on space medicine um, in the days to come. Um, the other talk that you gave um, was on brain monitoring in the intensive care unit um, and you presented some fascinating case studies on that. I guess my question is what, what do you think is the most exciting development to come out of um, brain function monitoring in the intensive care unit? I think the, the most exciting development from brain function monitoring is, is hopefully making the patient the patients stay in the intensive care unit and their life thereafter better mm -hmm. and safer and that is by monitoring you can try to decrease the incidence of delirium and agitation in the intensive care unit mm -hmm. which affects so many other systems our immune system our coagulation system uh, everything our increased risk of being on the ventilator longer so if we can get that under control and monitored and more appropriate, then we can make the ICU experience better, safer for the patient, and hopefully start to decrease the post-ICU syndrome, mm -hmm. which includes post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. and cognitive disorders as a result of being in the intensive care unit. So, so by, by using all, all these tools that we have now, putting things together and adequately treating patients, uh, not that we don't adequately treat them, better mm -hmm. treating our patients mm -hmm. uh, right now, maybe we can make their lives better 
after the intensive care unit experience. Mm, so incredibly worthy goals. Yes. Well, on behalf of ANSCA, thanks so much for your time. Thank, thank thanks you. Thanks very much. Nice meeting you.